Washington Mechanic course, you guys are, are going to challenge the exam. That's what I'm expecting that you're here for, and you're trying to get your knowledge up to date and that sort of stuff. Uh, considering this is going to be a very intense course, we're going to move along, we're going to cover a lot of material. Hopefully, it, it will be stuff that you recognize through your experience and that sort of stuff, so we'll be able to go on it. Stop me whenever you have to and ask me the questions. Don't let us go over something. Um, and then try to catch up with us later. It's better off that we can um, pace ourselves, and if we have to stay an extra hour a night. I don't mind doing that. So, don't be shy or asking questions. So, I'm Larry Keating. Um, I'm a licensed, you know, right, uh, licensed uh, machinist, licensed production equipment mechanic. So, I've been through. I just retired. So. That's what I'm doing now is trying to pass on some of that experience that I've gained through the years. Had a lot of people help me, and again, that's why I'm here to help you guys. Your books, um, I picked those books. They're American books. So there's a few things I'll be telling you about that as we go about what the Americans are saying or using for um, reference and what we're going to do. See, and we're in Canada, we're going to write exams in Canada, then we'll be worried about what our coverage is instead of those. And I'll point them out as we go along. But the main things I found people struggle with is hydraulics and pneumatics. And this book is one of the better ones. A lot of colored illustrations to tell you what's, you know, what's what. Really good illustrations to help you through and see what's, what it offers. Uh, workbook actually will help you work through some of those problems and some of the questions that they have you. Now, again, it's about 50% that's really relevant. I'll try to point out which ones to um, spend your time on, which ones not to. I'll also try to help you um, with questions that are going to be uh, more familiar to you. So we'll do that. Um, Maybe we won't do that. Um, I can go on with, with the introduction and that sort of stuff and try to do the whiteboard. We won't, without one of those, um, I'm going to be, we're going to be struck. You can follow along. I gave you this welcome introduction uh, <clears throat> page. So, really, what this is all about. Um, for the orientation part, uh, there's a bathroom right here. So if you have to use a washroom, it's right here. In case of a fire, when we go out in the hallway, either side you exit on, it's going to give you a way out. We're on the 10th floor, so you're going to be on 10 floors. Meet out front and make sure you find me. Because if someone comes and asks how many people were here in this room, i got to count for you and I want to be able to see you. So just look for me out of the front of the hotel because the fire Department will come and ask if everyone's out. Um, there is a place to have lunch, which will be, um, you know, if you brand, brown bag it, bring your own lunch. I think there's a place to do it, or we can eat here. There's only three of us, and we got this room, so we don't really have to go too far. If there's more people, there is a cafeteria or something downstairs, but uh, I'll find out more about that because I haven't been there myself. I just just flew in. So. Um, Any questions? We will be, uh, Larry, focusing more on on the actual test, will we? Yes. I mean, they, I purchased the modules. And there's just so much material. I mean, how could a guy go through all that material and try to focus? We're going to go through most of it. Yeah. But we'll concentrate on where you want to, where, where you want to retain the knowledge. <coughs> Um, like I have lots of questions for you to do your review. Have you got your date of when you're writing? In June. In June? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll have there will be a lot of reference material for you <coughs> to use when you're getting that. Have you got your... Actually, I have no real stuff to do. I want to focus on this course first. Then, then I'll choose the date. Okay. And you'll see when the material I give you, all of it's good. But I'll specify what to um, 
what to concentrate on for your exam. And and most people, that's why they take this course, is you know, we, we want to make sure we're well-rounded, but we, we pinpoint the areas that we have to spend on. <clears throat> now, uh, I don't know what it is about Alberta. As soon as I get here, my throat gets sore, and my eyes start to run, and that sort of stuff. So I will, you may see me rubbing my eyes, and, yeah. and I'm going to eat a few of these candies. If I mumble at all, please stop me. I'll punch through it, and I'll get back. But um, I got a bunch of cough drops in my pocket, because I know every time I come here, <clears throat> I don't know if it's here, it's dry, or whatever. Getting back to introductions, uh, I worked in the sugar industry for 20 plus years. I worked in a canning facility for meats. Um, worked in a, a baking facility where we cut, wrapped, and packaged the uh, meat. Then I worked in a bread facility, all with the same company, the last three. So I got a fair amount of experience, and in my first roles, um, I can work in powerhouses and everything else. So I, I know my hands have been on pretty much everything that I'm going to be talking about. So don't be afraid to ask. I'll try to throw some experiences in there too, which might make it easier. So where is your, like, what's your experience been where you've been working and that sort of stuff? I've been working at uh, Meatpacking Plant Open Brooks for probably the last 15 years uh, as, a, as a mechanic out there. And within the last four or five years, I decided to pursue my ticket, just sort of greater page, greater job security type thing. And I did challenge you to do a great seal couple of years ago when I got that 64. I said, you know what, forget it, right? And then I came across your course. I said, I'm going to give it another go. You could you could be a, a big help to me, big assistance. As we're going through this stuff, and anything pops in your mind that says, hey, yeah, that, that reminds me of something, point it out. It will give me just to make sure that I've got the right material and also give you guys something that have you ever challenged before? No. Okay, I'm so not. you're going to be going no, on the first time. Because I'm new to Canada. Mm -hmm. I came seven months ago. So back home, I was working with a uh, food production company and I was an operator. So I'm also a mechanical technician. So operating and also involved in the production and technician uh, processes. So really, uh, the heavy duty work on me, right? I've not been involved in that because the machines we operate is the high speed machines. So it just have the hydraulic and pneumatic systems and some electronics because it's semi mechatronics has to do with mechanic and electronics components. So really I've not really challenged the exam before. So, so that is why I want to really go for this course. Okay, so as you go through this and stop me if something doesn't make sense because it doesn't make sense and you go back to review it, it won't make sense then either. Uh, I gave you my card, um, but as we go through this and before we finish, I'm going to give you my email and my home number. So if you have to get, contact me before you write your exam and you have questions, you're going through the review and all the other stuff and you don't feel quite comfortable with this section or the other, call me. Uh, for example, I just spent two hours yesterday on the phone for the follow that's writing next Tuesday or tomorrow I guess mm -hmm. so I don't mind doing it that's you know I, I, if you have questions and you, you, you got concerns give me a call again that's I've had lots of people help me through the years get my trades yeah. and that's what I'm trying to do the same thing because that's what you that's what we have to do yeah. when you guys get your trade same thing and just remember where you are today yeah. and the people that are coming behind you pass on that information because a lot of times you work with people who want you to learn with school of hard knocks that's not really always the best way to learn so anyway um so the course outline you get your textbook we're going to follow the textbook through chapters 1 through 20. some chapters don't go in full detail of all the things you're going to have to know so i have a whole bunch of handouts for you as we go uh, each of these slides, I just have a copy of them, you can mark on the slides. As we go through the slides from the chapters, and you can follow through with your book, highlight some, some notes in the book so when you go back to study, you, know, you can concentrate on them. You'll have questions on them, but you may want to be able to reference the textbook just to go back and do it. Again, the reason I, I use this textbook, nice colored illustrations. For myself, when I was doing things, I like to have a visual picture of things. 
rather than just read through a textbook. So I found this one um, pretty decent. Um, so course expectations, we already, I, I think I've got a feel for you, what you're looking for. You're looking for direction on where that knowledge base should be. Um, what I also do here is I got up here a parking lot. So if you ask me a question, and I know we're going to cover it in a few chapters or whatever, I'm going to write it up here so when we get to it, I'll ask you, does that satisfy what you need to do? So ask the questions. If I know it's coming or we're going to deal with it another time, we'll put it here, but then we'll, go, we'll review this to make sure everything gets knocked off of it. So, any questions, any that sort of stuff, make sure we put it on the parking lot. That's what the parking lot's for. So, red seal requirements. On that handout, each province gets together, and uh, I was part of the province of New Brunswick, and we laid out what we required in the province. Quebec, all the provinces across Canada, all did the same thing. They went and said, okay, this is what we require in our province. So there's a core set of questions, and that, sort of, that core set is probably about 70, 60 to 70 percent of the exam. The other 30 is allowed to be picked by the province. So if you write in Alberta, you write in Saskatchewan, and I write in New Brunswick, or I write in Ontario, we won't have the same questions. So I try to cover that whole gamut of the questions, so no matter where you write, a lot of people say red seal is a red seal. They are provincially um, governed, so that body themselves, so that each province picks the questions for your exam. So there is a database, um, and our first chapter we'll cover will be the um, uh, health and safety, and I'll sort of tell you what the provinces, different provinces, sort of concentrate on. But you could get, you could get the same question in probably in any province. I think they all get the same database, but they do pick them so. There are different exams out there. You're not going to get the same one. If you rewrite again, you won't get the same one, probably. Um, I knew what the questions were on them because I, I had gone in for New Brunswick. I was on the board until 2000, so I knew what we had done. When I went to Ontario, I found that they were doing a few other things a little different. Um, so each province, and then in the last year, since I've been doing this, I, I found out, and it's normally through students like you guys call me up after you write the exam and say, this is, you know, this is what I had on. They asked it in a different way. My, we, we went over it, but we didn't sort of dig down into, uh, and I'll give you an example. Um, Alberta here <coughs> doesn't spend too much time on, um, masks, Saskatchewan does. Saskatchewan will ask you how to clean them, uh, what's the most important part of them. Here, they don't seem to get into the mask part. So that's, um, I try, I'll cover them all just to make sure that each, each province is represented and that, that question gets pulled out of the database. Well, at least you would, we would have talked about it so you have an idea. So, not only that, they all wait how many subject matter is on each one. So if you look on that sheet, you'll see that one you got right there now. It's got um, the blocks. So you got block A, which is occupational skills. B, rigging, hoisting, and lifting. C, mechanical components and systems. D, mechanical handling and process systems. Uh, e, fluid power. And F, preventive, predictive maintenance, testing, and commissioning. So they, they've taken what each province has actually asked to do them, and they've uh, gone in and set them up 19%, 13%, 26, 19, 11. So the percentage is adding up to 100, and then the questions, how many questions there are is that last column. That could be 26 questions on occupational skills. So we're gonna cover that. But on that occupational skills, they might have 100 questions to ask. Pretty much all the same material, but just ask it different verbiage or a different way or whatever. So really, all you have to do is understand it and then the question, you'll know the answer to the question. But if you don't quite understand it, memorizing a question and an answer is no value, but to know that knowledge area 
is what I'm trying to get across. So, then the next page is the, uh, the structure we're going to have for the classroom. We're going to be here today till I think 5.36 o'clock. So that's what we'll call our day uh, quits for today. And we're going to, um, each day we're going to go from 8.30 to 5. Each course gets a little different, depends on how when we fly in and what days are available and stuff. It, you know, it's, it, it's, fine. it's going to be 8.30 to 5 every day. On yours, you probably have only a six hour day, because that was a set, that was planned for a seven day course. Okay. We're, only do, we're going to do it in six. Okay. So today we'll stay till um, six o'clock, we'll say, in this evening. And then tomorrow we'll start at 8.30 and we'll be finished at five. Now, if we're not quite finished at five and it goes to 5.30, again, this is this is yours. This you have to get this. This is for you. I'm, I'll stay here if you need to stay till 5 30, 6 o'clock. I don't mind that. Um, if we get behind or whatever, my objective right now is to get we say we're at day six. At day six on this on your thing is to write your final exam. We're going to be doing that on day five and using day six as a as a. refresher or going over the test results. Now your final exam is going to be 135 questions, 136. The one I was copying and pasting and stuck in the stuck in the middle of 136. <laughs> However I did it, but um, it will be a good opportunity or good reference of what you get on that. You should get on you, that's how you should be able to get on your so it, it will be a good test for you to know where you are. So, um, any questions about how they came up with questions or how they, how they, um, what the expectations are? Um, <coughs> we have, I want to ask, we have uh, something like Ask questions. Uh, maybe possible um, ask questions. Maybe on our own, we can deal with it. Yep. In our own private time. You have probably when you leave here after you spend all day here, yeah. go home. I'm going to say you're going to have and it's probably um, two hours worth of work. And again, it depends on, on how much you want to have your own project. apprenticeship. You would have right exams like these. So. Here you got exams one, two, three, and four. Again, don't you should bring a binder with you, you know, one of the three ring binders. Go get one of them one cheap ones at the dollar store. But what I'm going to give you will probably fill up a one inch binder. So get one of those because when you go back to review, this is what you're gonna do. If you notice there's a bunch of circles on the some of those questions. Yeah. The circle ones I would pay more attention to, the ones that don't have the circles on them, read them but file them in the back of your mind because, and again, don't use that for this class. That's not, that's just help you before you do your exam, a few weeks before. The last day I'll give you some suggestions of how to prepare for your exams. Um, here's some more questions. Again, these are questions that have just been, um, again, not for this course. This is for review material after. Uh, don't spend any time going through them, just for the fact that we don't have um, we don't have a great deal of time. For the material we're going to do, we're definitely going to have enough for you to do. But this stuff is excellent material when it comes time for a month to start reviewing a month before you write. When did you say June? Yes. So next month you'll be you'll be starting. You may even start to do this for sure. Great after. I actually have to use Pardon me? I actually have to use that question there. Yeah. Question there. So um, and I got more for you. And there is quite a few that are more on that test. Yes. Um, I do have more, but I'm going to give them to you as we as a course so brings them together. Um, I would, uh, I'll give them to you then, because at the end of the day, they're going to be the same questions I asked you. 
just have to bring another one up. This one's just a, this, this projector needs to be like right here. Oh, is that so right? Yeah, short throws. I'm going to grab another one that's a long throw, so be where we where that one is. Okay, so I'll back. Just to start with that. All right, thank you. Um, so, like I say, I've my whole presentation is really based on, on a PowerPoint presentation, um, and we'll follow it through. Um, your textbook, you might as well open your textbook now. Uh, and we'll follow and go through chapter one. We're just going to follow that book just as if we were going through it. And anything that should be added to it, I will pass you out additional information uh, to that. Anything that's there that's American standard because they use like um, Fahrenheit. Unfortunately, in Canada, we'll ask you questions in Fahrenheit and in Celsius. Um, but there are some things that, that I'll point out as we go that um, we're not the same. The same as um, the last two questions in feet, and we may have them in meters, we may not. So I'm, I'll, I'll just cover both, just so you're comfortable with them. Um, so, chapter one. Again, this is the one additional, or the two additional sheets that are that we're going to cover. Um, on on the safety. I'm not sure about other provinces. I also noticed when I uh, took the exam, they don't give you down the formulas, eh? No, some provinces do. Yeah. And all in New Brunswick, you get a formula sheet. Um, I know you challenge individual years, you know? and I got some friends that challenge individual years, and yeah, you're given a formula sheet. You got to have a pick up which form it pertains to what well, question. But since, and again, I'm only just following talking with colleagues. Back in 2004, 2005, I think they did away with all the formula sheets. And if you need to know something that you're not going to get off the top of your head, they'll give it to you in the question. So if they ask you thermal growth of whatever, they'll say steel is a thermal growth of 0.000123 um, in the question. So you're supplied with enough information. Formula uh, base itself isn't going to be tricky. When we get the calculations, we're going to go through them. Okay. There are probably four to five things you have to know, and you can either, you can do, well, for all your calculations, there probably is maybe seven, eight, I, I've never really counted them. But as we go through them chapter by chapter, <coughs> you may want to just memorize those six or seven things, and then write them on the scrap paper they give you when you first read. Gotcha. Other than that, yeah, the hydraulic triangle, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yeah, if you want to know that one. Yeah, yeah. and electrical. Yeah, um, electrical, sure. Uh, and like I say, as we do those sections, we will we'll do them. And you may want to just jot yourself down and take them because you have it. Put your thumb over whatever you want. The other two formulas already there. So uh, we'll go through those. Um, and the other calculations that, that I think will be um, be required for you to know. Good. So, like I said, our general area of knowledge, if you know it, I always recommend don't try to don't try to remember the question and the answer. Like all those um, questions and answers I gave you on the page from block one, two, three, and four, and the other. Um, don't read through them and remember them because they'll ask them in a different way. Because they might ask them backwards. You know, what is the right answer? They'll ask that question and put the information from the question in the answer. So, I guess my um, my suggestion is think more of the material um, 
the, the material subject matter rather than a question and answer. I know I did it different times with, at different ages. When I wrote my first one, all I wanted to know was questions and answers, memorizing which one of the four ones. Uh, that doesn't work today. It's uh, with the computer age, they have a lot better chance of making questions up and changing verbiage really easy. Like I said, each day, the questions that we've done at the end of the day, take them and go back over them. Very first thing next morning, if there's something there you want me to go over again, let me know what it is. We'll, we'll revisit it again that next morning, first thing, or we'll put it on the parking lot. And if we don't deal till until the very last day under review, we'll do it under review. So I think today the objective I'm going to try to do is get our first four chapters in. Um, now, a regular day will start after a couple hours. We'll take a 15 minute break. Um, I question either of you smoke? Well, I'm trying to quit. <laughs> Good time to quit then. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you have to go outside the hotel to smoke. I, yeah. I can find out where yeah, the item yeah. where it is. No, I'll be good. I'll be, I'll be okay. Yeah. Um, but we'll have a couple 15 minute breaks. Lunchtime, we'll take a half hour. Um, you know, social chats and stuff like that while we're doing that or questions. I'm, I'm yeah. always open to whatever questions and that sort of stuff you guys have also. Um, and that's what they don't use to sound like. You guys see that all right? Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. So there's water in front of you guys. So help yourself. There's a bowl of candy. One of the suggestions I make, sugar will keep your brain working. So even if you don't like candy a great deal, chop on them every once in a while, especially after dinner, um, but it definitely helps retention and keep you stimulated to, to um, watch what we're going to do. So chapter one, again, go through, follow me along in your book. You'll see, you'll see these pictures in your book, write in your book, that's your book. So write in it, do whatever you need to do in order to be able to come back to it. The pen I gave you, on the top of it, the blue, it's got a blue highlighter, pull the top off. It's got a blue highlighter on the top, so you can highlight that way. The other side, you can write down, circle, whatever you want. Um, you get a couple pens there. But mark in the book in many, as many ways you can, because that's what's going to, like, a month from now, you're going to have to have something in front of you recall what we went over. Um, I would really, if this would be an opportune time, if you were writing within, from the time we finished, within two weeks, that would be the optimum. Because it would be fresh in your mind and you'd be able to go through. Mm -hmm. A month or so from now, a lot of this stuff here is um, things you have to mark in your book somehow in order to recall. <clears throat> Can we just get a copy of that recording? <laughs> <laughs> so here, main thing we have to we're worried about here, we're working in an industrial environment. You have to worry about electrical, chemical, mechanical falls in confined spaces. There are the dangers that we're going to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, lifting. Of course, you take safety things, don't lift your legs, you know, keep your back straight, all that sort of stuff. Again, common sense. But if you don't have to use your back, 
use some other method. PPE. What does PPE stand for? Right, personal protective equipment. There, I believe, if we went back to that safety thing, there's either nine or eleven questions on safety. There's going to be three to five on personal protective equipment. So, keep in mind, you know, you see the welder with the leather jackets, leather gloves, steel toes, pants that come down over him so he doesn't get sparks in him. You got hard hats. Um, you get different types of flame resistant clothing, uh, electrical uh, gloves, uh, earmuffs, uh, earmuffs that fit right on your hard hat, hard hat itself, earplugs, uh, masks, uh, all that stuff. That's all things that are personal protective equipment. Who is responsible for the personal protective equipment? Me. <laughs> right. Now, to see these things right here, this underline, if I have underlined, you will want to underline them or put a note or write something in your book because if I have it underlined as we go through it, it is important. So you can write a note, you can do whatever, but who is responsible for wearing, maintaining, keeping in good order? Your PPE. Once a company issues it to you, you are responsible to maintain it, keep it in good shape, make sure you turn it in when it has to be uh, replaced and all that stuff. But you are. This first chapter, and a lot of it, a lot of people with safety and stuff, it's good, but I mean, this would give you the opportunity to start to get into the swing of how we're going to um, look at things throughout here. But just a designation of the acronym of PPE is important. Know what it means. And know that we have chemical radiological, radi radiological physical, electrical, mechanical, gravity, all that stuff are our enemy. They're all hazards to us. Eye and face protection. Again, to keep the dust and dirt away from us. Our eyes, you only get one set of them. Don't want to lose them. Now, eye wash station. What do you think of when you, when you think eye wash station? It's the first thing that comes to mind. Because they're different depending on what you work at. There's always more time there. Right. The top, there's the top there. Yep. In your book, on page on the bottom corner, right hand side on the well, next page, I think it is. Next page, no, go back a page. Back one more page. There it is, right in the corner. Okay. Put a star or something beside that one. That was a question. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Most of the stuff you just highlighted will be directly related. Well, you say this was located there? Go, go back. It almost the front page. On the second page of the oh, okay. One more. Right there. That's what an eye wash station and an emergency shower is. A lot of people when they say eye wash station thinks of those things you go over and grab a saline solution off the wall, stick it up in your eye and squeeze it. That is not an eye wash station. That's an emergency cleaning station or whatever, but that's not an emergency eye wash station. Emergency eye wash station must be hooked right in, plumbed right into the water. So you have to have tempered, temperature controlled, potable water. There has to be caps on it to keep the dust from going on it. So when you turn it on and it pops them off, you're not getting dust blowing in your eyes. And there must be a log book there. And that log book has to say it was inspected. Someone can buy and inspect it last month. There should be a tag. Sometimes there's just a tag and there'll be a date and someone's initials on it saying that they came and did it. That is, so it's not saving solution. That's that's not, that's a portable station. You might have one on a welding machine or a grinding thing or in a shop or whatever. 
but an eyewash station is those nice yellow stations you see plumbed right hard, plumbed into the, the water system. They have to be temperature controlled. So there's three elements they have to have. They are controlled by tempered, potable water. There has to be caps on the nozzles, spray nozzles. And there has to be uh, an inspection report or an inspection logbook. They call it a logbook. Some are just a tag. You'll see some tags are on a fire extinguisher. It's just on with a cord or whatever. The same thing will do as a logbook. It counts as a logbook. But that's the way the regulations say. You have to have those three things. But again, don't mix up those saline solution ones because um, they're not really high wash. Okay? Hard hats. So you have hard hats, they have a liner in them. It will take contact from the top, it will take contact from the side. You can see the little cone shapes where they're actually built to take impact. If they take impact, you're going to replace them. But every five years, you have to replace a hard hat. Now, hard hat's the same as baby seats and all the other sort of stuff. They're made of plastic. Plastic, especially if you're outside in the sun and radiation and everything, will weaken the structures of them. Um, so, every five years, that should be replaced. So, if someone gives you one, you're still employed there five years later, you should go give them another one back and get another one. Is it tack on it? Inside, if you look on the sides, there'll be a clock. It looks like a whole bunch of holes. And that'll be stamped year or month. So again, you'll have to see what your company policy is on it because even though they, they stamp it on date of manufacture, the date that it's actually given to you, I believe that's five years, but it's, it's a life is five years. Ago. So if, it has, if it's in the environment, how you track that or whatever, you'd have to see what your company policy is. But just remember that every five years it should be replaced. So it's issued to you, Five years and then you should be replacing. Hearing protection. Again, hearing protection, only one seven years. When your ears become damaged, they won't heal themselves. It's one part of the body that doesn't heal itself. So, a um, couple things here that, that's important. What does this what does that stand for? DBA? This is Right, and that's, that is the way they measure sound in decibels. So you could get a question like, what is sound measured in? So you want to know, it's measured in decibels. Occupation health safety also requires warning signs for hearing protection above 87. If they ask you, it will probably be an even number. It will probably be 90, we'll say above 90. But 87 is the sort of the threshold point, and I'll tell you that you need to be in there. Now it's time limited. At 90, you can you can be unprotected for eight hours. At 92, it goes down to six. 95, it goes to four. 97, after three hours, you'll cause permanent damage to your ears. At 102 hours, 110 is only a half an hour. 115 decibels, you can only stand a quarter hour time before you'll be causing damage to your ears. And 115 is somewhere between a punch press and a reciprocating aircraft homer. You're sitting on the ground rubbing your engine. Down. The two things you remember there decibels and you say 87. I know I, in my mind, I always say it above 90 because normally when they ask you questions, it will be, um, they'll give you 70, 80, 60, 50, but 87 is, is where you want to know when you draw a line. You have to put signs up to warn people at that time. And pinch points. I don't think too many people worked in the trade very long and haven't pinched themselves either installing things 
taking things apart, whatever. So again, before we work on the stuff, you lock it up. And before you return it back to service, you have to cage these things. So three more things to think about when you're locking something up. One sec, is your projector?